Hello there, this is Wellington with PX5 and today I'll show you how to detect and mitigate memory corruption issues with PX5 RTOS. So in this video, we'll run through the pointer data verification definition, how to enable it, how it works, then I'll show you a 3 minutes demo and then I'll share some resources. Let's begin by looking at the problem we're trying to solve here by acknowledging first the memory corruption is one of the most common issues with embedded systems, both accidental and malicious. And Stack Overflow is the most common memory corruption issue. Also, these problems are especially concerning for applications using MCUs or microcontrollers where we don't have MMUs, memory management units, or MPUs, memory protection units available there is a way around memory corruption issues. It's the pointer data verification PDV, which is a software-based technique used to help detect and mitigate both intentional and accidental memory corruption. It works like this. For important information, a verification code is created and stored in memory. Then, before the important information is used, a verification code is generated again and compared with what was stored before. And if the code doesn't match, then PDV will alert the application by calling the central error handling function. PDV is a great tool to add to your defense in depth strategy with as low as four assembly instructions to run. And how does PDV work? Well, I mentioned before the verification code or the fingerprint, and in order to create that, the PDV algorithm will take the data value, the storage location, and a random number, so both spatial and temporal properties. In our samples, the random number is provided by the application, but we strongly recommend using a TRNG or true random number generator if available. When you use one of these, no two executions of the program would get the same number, so even if a hacker finds out the verification code, next time the system boots, this will be different. PDV also uses the storage location as part of the fingerprint, and this will be different for each customer device as well as each firmware image since they will all have a different load map. Out of the box, the PDV algorithm is shown here, which is A or the data value plus the storage location exclusive or the random number. This is defined in the px5.h header file and you can define your own code verification if you prefer. The PDV verify function will check if the verification code matches the one created before, and if it detects any difference, it raises an exception to the central error handling function. And the user defined handling code will take it from there. Normally, the handling code should lock the issue and reset the device. The use of PDV is optional, and it is not enabled by default. To enable it, you should build PX5 RTOS source which specific defines according to your needs. There are four possibilities. The function pointer verify enable, object verify enable, memory pool verify enable, and stack verify enable. Let's take a look at them one by one. When you define PX5 function pointer verify enable, all function pointers will be verified before their use against the verification code established when they were set up. In this example, the start routine is at the flash memory 0x2376D. The internal PX5 thread control structure that contains the function pointers as well as other information starts at the RAM address 02001A0. Then, the thread start routine function pointer is saved in the structure member named entry routine in this address here, and the verification code for the start routine is saved in the structure member entry routine verification code in this address here. The verification code generated for the entry routine function pointer is here, and this code is verified via PDV before use, which prevents it from jumping to any unknown addresses. 
When the PX5 object verify enable is defined, all internal PX5 RTOS objects are evaluated against the verification code. Take for example the PX5 control structure of the previous example. When a thread is created, the verification ID is inserted into the structure member thread verification ID here at this address, and this is used to compute the verification code using the standard PDV formula, then stored in the structure member thread verification code here at this address. Note the verification ID and the verification code are at the top and the bottom of the PX5 thread control structure respectively. Therefore, any sequential memory corruption at the top or bottom of the structure has a good probability of being detected. Also note, the same technique is used to verify all PX5 RTOS objects included in this list, as well as the global PX5 RTOS internal data, which are also protected with PDV. Building PX5 RTOS with PX5 memory pool verify enable results in the verification of internal PX5 RTOS memory fragments within the memory pool. In this example, the first memory block is at this address, which is then linked to the second memory block fragment here. When each memory block is created, the next block pointer is set up along with the verification code contained in the structure member memory pool pointer verification code. Before the next block is used, a new verification code is computed and compared against the stored value. If they match, processing continues as normal. If there is a mismatch, the central error handling is called. Note, when the application frees memory, both the block being freed and the block immediately following the memory are verified. When you build PX5 RTOS with PX5 stack verify enable, all of internal PX5 RTOS stack frames will be verified during each function call. Each stack frame has an ID and the function return address is used when possible and the verification code. Upon entry of the function, the verification code is computed and stored in the stack frame. Before the function exits, the verification code is computed again to help verify the stack integrity. If either the verification code or the return address are overwritten, PDV will detect this and call the central error handling. This helps applications find the source of their stack override problem sooner and also prevents hackers from corrupting the stack for remote execution attacks. In this demo, we'll be using the memory pool APIs and the demo code was built with the PX5 memory pool verify enabled defined. As always, main start running by creating variables, thread handles, and a memory area. Then, in line 7, we start PX5 RTOS by providing the random number for pointer data verification, memory area, and the size of that memory area. This will convert main into a thread, running at the default priority of 16. Next, to create a memory pool, we need to provide a handle to the pool. Any parameters we need, in this case, no the starting address of the memory area for the pool and the number of bytes in the memory area for the pool. See the memory pool created here with 1024 bytes free. Next, it will try to allocate 8 bytes from the memory pool. Memory was available and taken from the pool. Notice we have PDV enabled, so as a result of the memory pool allocate API call, the PDV create function generated the verification code for both the new block and the next block. Also note, the verification codes are quite unique, which makes it very unlikely a hacker would be able to figure out their pattern. Main will then try to write the value 0 to the memory. Like this. Next, it will try to write the value 1. There is no more space left but the application will write the value 2 to the next block, writing past the allocated memory. This will corrupt the metadata in front of the following memory block in the memory pool. Let's see. Here, shown in red to demonstrate the issue. Next, main will try to free up the memory allocated. The memory pool free API 
calls PDV Verify, but since the data was corrupted by the last write, verification code won't match. A level 3 exception is raised to the central error process, then PXYVRTOS logs the error and resets the application or device, bringing the application back to normality. On a side note, when debugging your application, it's always a good idea to have a breakpoint at the beginning of the central error processing function. It will make it easier for you to see when something is going wrong. For any additional information about PDV, make sure to try running our samples. And there's also a full chapter on the PX5RTOS user guide dedicated to PDV. That's the demo we had for today. As always, if you want to know more and how to get started, take a look at our website at px5rtos.com. You can email us at info at px5rtos.com with questions, requests for information, or a quote. Thank you for your interest.